Hey friends, welcome to my channel. My name's Emma Fave, and I wanna welcome you to Watercolor Week. So this is something I haven't done on my channel. I'm doing seven days of seven watercolor exercises to get you started and get you confidently painting with watercolor. Watercolor week is gonna be perfect for those who need a refresher or those who have just gotten some watercolor supplies and have no idea how to use them. I am starting with the absolute basics and going through all the major techniques you need to know in order to paint with watercolor. My videos are gonna be short and sweet this week, so you don't need to take a lot of time every day, but I'm gonna be supplying you with really great, easy exercises that you can practice daily so you can be a pro with watercolor in no time. A lot of the exercises and information I'm gonna be sharing with you this week are featured in my book, Watercolor Lessons. So if you'd like to pick up a copy, it is available on Amazon now, so you have that reference to look back at whenever you'd like. But for now, I want you to take all that anxiety, all that fear of starting something new, let it go, and let's get started. Before we begin, I'd just like to let you know that this series is catered to the absolute beginner and people who have dabbled in watercolor before. If you already have watercolor supplies and know a fair amount about them, you can skip ahead to the actual exercise, which I will put in a timestamp in the description below. But if you haven't purchased watercolor supplies or you want to know a little bit more about them, keep watching right from here. For the people who have been playing around with watercolor for a little bit and know a bit more about it, today's exercise may seem a little bit more on the basic side, but it's always great to relearn what's in your palette, get to know your brushes a bit better, so I don't suggest that you skip today's video. The goal for today is to just play and that's what we're going to do. So let's begin. Okay, so for our first video, we are talking all about watercolor supplies and what you need to get started, as well as basic watercolor strokes. Okay, so the first watercolor supply I'm going to talk about is paper. Now, when painting with watercolor, you need a specific watercolor paper. You can't paint on printer paper, cardstock. It has to be specifically watercolor paper. Now, if you've ever walked into a Michaels or an art store, it might be pretty overwhelming because there are tons of different brands and types and you have no idea where to start. So I'm here to give you a little bit of insight into what to look for. When looking for watercolor paper, the first thing you wanna look for is the weight. 140 pounds or 300 GSM is the perfect weight. You don't want anything less than that because that means that the paper will be a lot thinner. With watercolor, you're gonna be using a lot of water, so you need a heavy paper to withstand the water so it doesn't buckle and warp too much. The second thing I look for in watercolor paper is that it is cold pressed paper. Cold press means the finish or the texture on the paper. Cold pressed is a bit more rough and hot pressed is smooth. For the type of watercolor painting I do, cold press works best, so if you're gonna be participating this week, I definitely suggest looking for cold press paper. I'm gonna show you some of the paper I have with me here today. This is Canson XL watercolor paper. This is the paper I first started out with. It is a spiral bound kind of sketchbook and it is student grade paper. It is not the best paper. There are some flaws with it and it can be a little bit tricky to work on, but it is perfect to get started with if you've never painted with watercolor before and you're just not sure if you like watercolor yet. It is very affordable and I definitely suggest if this is something you've never done and you don't wanna spend a lot of money, Canson XL is a pretty good option to start with. My absolute favorite paper is Arches watercolor paper. This is my favorite. It is a professional paper. It is more on the expensive side. I don't suggest getting this to practice on, but once you've found your love for watercolor, you'll notice once you do use this paper, it is very different. It works so well, but to get started, I don't suggest it. The difference with this paper compared to the Canson paper is that it is 100% cotton and that makes a huge difference. There are tons of 100% cotton watercolor papers on the market. I have done a video testing about seven of them, so if you wanna check that video out, I will link it below, but this is probably my favorite one. Now, one thing you'll see me painting in a lot is this sketchbook. It is from Etcher Lab and it is my favorite sketchbook. It is also 100% cotton. It is actually thinner, so it's not as heavy as 140 pounds like our other papers, like I've said, but it works very, very well. I love this sketchbook. You'll see me use it in almost all of my videos. And I do suggest if you are in the market for a really good sketchbook and you have a bit of a higher budget to purchase one, I definitely suggest 
I definitely suggest these. But again, if you're just starting out, I can't stress enough, work with what is in your budget, 100%. Don't feel like you have to rush out and get the best supplies to get started. I used this Canson XL paper and the cheapest watercolor paints to start. I used that for about a year into my watercolor journey and it served me just fine until I felt I was ready to upgrade my supplies. So that is the first thing you need is watercolor paper. Okay, so let's talk about paint. The next thing you need is specifically watercolor paint. There again are tons of different brands and kinds. You may see some that are in tubes. You'll see some that are in watercolor pans like this one. This is Paul Rubens watercolors and these are little pans. They come already filled in a pre-made palette. This is a really great option for beginners because it has all the colors you need and it also has a palette. The watercolors you'll see me use a lot on my channel are in this palette, which is a custom palette I put together using watercolor tubes. I use Winsor & Newton Professional Watercolors. Again, I upgraded after a few years of painting with watercolor. I was using the Winsor & Newton Cotman brand for a long time in the tubes, and even before that I was using the cheapest artist loft palette there was, and it was great to get me started. It was super affordable and it's what made me fall in love with watercolor. But the way I use tubes is that it's a wet paint that's in this tube, I don't think I can get this one open right now. I squeeze it into my palette, I let it dry overnight, I let them harden, and then I start my painting from this. When choosing a paint, don't think about it too much to get started, pick a watercolor. I would suggest picking a watercolor palette that is pre-made like this, just so you can dive in and get started and get painting. Don't worry too much about the tubes. There are benefits to using both of them and I have done a comparison on my channel before. Again, I will link that video below as well because I don't wanna go too in depth about the difference right now. But for the purpose of this week, just use whatever watercolor palette you have. Even if it's the cheapest of the cheap watercolor palette, use it. Okay, so we know we need watercolor paper and watercolor paints. The next thing we need is paint brushes. Now you can get away with just painting with one paintbrush or two, you don't need the fanciest of the fancy. These are my specific watercolor brushes that I collaborated on with Craftimo. These are my favorite in my three favorite go-to sizes. I like a round brush, which is just the shape of the brush. It is like a typical paintbrush look, right? It's round all around and then it goes to a point. This is a round brush. There are different types of brushes like flat wash brushes where they're flat like this. There are filbert brushes where they're rounded at the top. There's tons of different shapes, but to get started, I definitely suggest picking out a round brush to start. Now, again, like I said, you don't need three different sizes, but if I had to pick three, these would be it. I would pick a size 12, a size six, and a size two round brush. And the difference within sizes is that they withhold different amounts of paint and water. Obviously, the bigger brush is gonna hold more water, the medium brush is gonna hold a medium amount of water, <laughs> and the smaller brush is gonna hold the least amount. This is great for detail, this is great for larger work, and this is great for everyday work. Okay, so now that we know that we need brushes, I'm gonna tell you the simple anatomy of a brush. Here we have the handle, this is where we hold our brush. This here is called the ferrule. This connects to the handle, and the ferrule also connects to the bristles. Here on the ferrule, this little part, the indent, is called the crimp. This is what secures it to the handle. And then this here, obviously, are the bristles. There are parts of the bristles you should know. Here, I like to call it the tip, or you can call it the toe, which is just the little point. The middle, the thickest part of the bristles, is called the belly of the brush. So you'll hear me say, push down to the belly of the brush. And then right here where the ferrule meets the bristles, that's called the heel. So when I say push down to the belly of the brush, I never want you to push down right to the heel where the ferrule is gonna scrape along the paper, only to the belly, which is this middle part. So we have the tip, the belly, the ferrule, the crimp, and the handle. Again, I have tons of videos on brushes and more specifics about them. I'm not gonna get into it today, but I just want you to know you need brushes. Now the last two things that you need to get started with painting is you need paper towel to blot your brush off and dry it. Also for some techniques you might need some paper towel and then you also need water. So you can have one water jar 
or two. They're, my water jars are a little dirty. That's okay. I need to clean it. But I do suggest just getting a cup of water. doesn't matter what it's in. Um, I will recommend getting two for a couple different reasons. One, you can use one to wash off all your dirty paint water in and then use some clean water when you need it to pick up some clean water, which you will see later in this series. You can also separate them by washing your brush off with either cool colors or warm colors. Cool colors being blues, greens, and purples. You can wash off in this jar and then you could wash off your reds, yellows, and oranges in this jar, and that just kind of prevents your colors from becoming muddy, but we will get into that later. Either way, get yourself water cups and paper towel. And that is what you need to get started. That is it. You need paper, paint, brush, paper towel, and water. Okay, so now that we know what we need, let's get started. I'm gonna use my Canson paper. I'm gonna use this Paul Rubens watercolor palette. I'm gonna use my size 12 brush, and we're gonna dive in to our first little exercise. Okay, so I have all of my stuff set up. Now I get a lot of questions about why do I put my palette on my left side when I'm right-handed? I've gotten that question so many times and that's just, for me, it just feels more comfortable because I rest my arm down here a lot. And if I did that, my arm would be in my palette. So I like to put it on this side, but you put your stuff wherever you feel the most comfortable. Okay, so now this is for the absolute beginner. And I've been asked this question and people feel really embarrassed to ask this question. They think it's a dumb question, but it's not. How do you do this? Where, where do you even start? Okay, so the first thing you need to know about watercolor is you need water to activate your paints. When you get watercolor paint, especially in a palette like this, they are gonna be dry and hard. You need to activate them with water. And there are two ways you can do this. I have a little water spray bottle that I like to use that activates my whole palette. I just spray it all over to wet up my paints. And that helps activate the paints. Now, if you don't have a little spray bottle, the other way you can do this is really wet your brush, soak your brush in that water, and then you can just bring little wa water droplets over and squish it around, squish it, swish it around, okay? And that is how you activate the paint, okay? That's what you wanna do. Water on your brush, then over to your paint. Now, when loading your brush with paint, the more water you have and the less paint you have, the lighter the color will be. The more paint you have and the less water you have, the darker the color will be. So that all depends on how long you're swishing your brush around in your paint palette. So my brush is pretty wet, my paints are wet. I'm gonna start off with my first exercise being swatching all of my colors on my paper. This is gonna help us get to know the colors in our palette, what they look like, but also get us familiar with just loading our brush. Don't worry about making any mistakes, just go for it. The one thing you need to remember is that in between colors, you're gonna to need to wash off your brush thoroughly so you're not bringing over that color over to that color. Now, when we get to painting actual paintings, when we get to painting actual pictures, you'll see that I contaminate my colors all the time. I might paint with blue and then not wash it fully and put it in my yellow and it turns a bit green. That's okay. But for the purpose of swatching our colors, we want them to be as pure and as clean as possible. So just try your best to make sure that your brush is clean as possible. So I'm just taking my really wet brush into my paint and I'm swishing it around a few times. The more you swish it around, the more paint you're gonna bring up and the more saturated your color is gonna be. Look how beautiful and dark that is. Now, if I didn't do that many little swishes, say my brush is just newly wet and I just went in once, it's not gonna be as pigmented. Do you see that? That's a bit darker, that's a bit lighter. So you can play around with that too, just play. Today is about playing, getting to know your supplies and swatching your colors, getting to know your colors that are in your palette and just the feel for your brush. Okay, I'm just gonna wash my brush off. Run it against the side because then you're just gonna have too much water on your brush if you don't do that. I'm pretty sure this color is contaminated already. Yeah, I think there was like green in there. <laughs> That's okay, I know my colors so I'm not too worried about it. And I just dab it against the bottom of the jar. You, you should be very gentle, you shouldn't do that. You don't wanna get 
the feral tutu wet. You'll notice that little droplets of water collect here and sometimes they'll drop onto your paintings. But I'm very, I'm not type A. I kind of just go with the flow. Um, do whatever you, <laughs> whatever you feel like. But just have fun and just kind of swatch your colors. Now, if you want to make it interesting and just play around with your brush as well, you don't have to swatch them in little tiny like squares like this. You could always, you know, just play around with your brush, do some lines. Make it interesting. Just to get that color on the paper, just get yourself painting. No pressure to make anything, you know, perfect or a masterpiece. Just have fun. Okay, and you may realize, why isn't that color as dark? Maybe your color is starting to dry a bit. You might need to add a bit more water. When you're painting with watercolor, I like to add a little pool of water on top because that's how I know that there's going to be a decent amount of color I'm going to pick up. And you'll just get to know these things as you move on with watercolor. The more you do it, the more familiar you're going to be with all these things and the feelings. And some people will ask me, like, how do I know um, how much is on my, my brush and all that stuff? It's just honestly, it's a feeling that you get. And just the more you practice, the more you'll be familiar with it. So just keep playing and have fun. So you can just do little waves like this. And this is going to be combining with our next little exercise, which we can actually just do while we swatch this, is basic strokes. So I want you to actually play around with your brush. A round brush is great because you can make really thin lines using really light pressure. So I'm going to show you. So using just the tip of your brush and really light pressure, I like to hold it a bit more vertically. You can make really thin lines like that or you can make thick lines by pressing down with not like a crazy amount of pressure, but a little bit of pressure to get those thicker lines. That's why I love this brush. I love round brushes. I find they're the most versatile. You can make so many shapes with them just by alternating different types of pressures with the bristles. So while you're swatching your colors, play around with different pressures and movements, shapes if you like. You can do light pressure and heavy pressure. This is actually one of the most important strokes that you will learn with watercolor is light pressure to heavy pressure to light pressure. This is how I create all my florals and all my leaves. Okay, you start off with light pressure with the tip of your brush and then you press down to heavy pressure and then come back up to light pressure. Give that a try while you're swatching your colors and you can almost come up with the most perfect leaf shape. Drag it up. So light pressure, bring it down to heavy pressure, drag it along, and then slowly move up to light pressure while you're still dragging it, like that. And just play around with these different shapes that you can make. Now I don't wanna to do too many, I still have a bunch more colors to swatch, so I wanna make sure that I'm not using up everything, but you can create some movement like that. Just play. So I'm going to continue to swatch these colors and I'm going to have some music playing and I want you to just swatch along with me and have some fun.
Okay, so here are our fun swatches. We've gotten to know our colors, what's in our palette. We've played a little bit around with how to manipulate our brush and move it. And again, I'm just gonna go over some of our basic strokes. So flip it over, grab yourself a new piece of paper, and let's practice some more of our basic strokes. Okay, so like I mentioned when we were swatching, we did this light pressure and heavy pressure stroke. Now this is where I want you to practice. I want you to take a whole page or two just to practice. Pick your favorite color in the palette. So whatever one you want, I'm just gonna take this like Viridian Green. And we're just gonna practice doing some light pressure strokes creating very thin lines. So again, I like to hold my brush kind of vertically and I just move it across the page like so. Okay, I tend to move my whole arm rather than just my wrist because then you'll get a bit of a curve unless you wanna practice some curved lines. Now getting those really thin lines might be tricky. If you'd like to try some of your other sizes of brushes like a size two to get really thin lines, you can do that. But for now, use whatever brush you have and just create some really thin lines. You can flick your wrist a bit to see if you can create like little wispy lines. You can just go right across the page See what you can do. You can create really tiny short lines, cross them, just have some fun and get to know your brush. Okay, so that is the first stroke. The next one I want you to do, pick another color if you'd like, is some heavier strokes. So I just want you to practice pressing down to the belly, not the heel, the belly of the brush and just dragging it across. Does the color get lighter, darker? What happens? What do you notice? I notice that it's getting a little bit lighter. We're running out of paint. So that's creating a really nice dark to light gradient. You're learning something there. Try it again, but this time turn your brush. Instead of having it this way, I'm gonna turn it this way and see if we can get a different amount of the brush on there to get a thicker shape. So look at this. See, it's a little bit thicker. I think I need more paint and we're just moving it sideways. Get a feel for what that feels like. Get a feel for what that feels like. Okay, you're just moving your brush around. Now that we've done some really thin, really th thick strokes, let's try some medium strokes. So not completely all the way down to the belly, heavy pressure and not really, really light pressure, but just kind of medium. Okay, go from thin to medium, I need more paint, to thick. See what that feels like. All right, and then once you've mastered that, start with your light pressure to heavy pressure strokes again. Okay, I'm gonna grab my Viridian again, and I'm gonna start with the tip of my brush. My brush is kind of like on a 45 degree angle, and I'm just dragging it with light pressure, then I'm moving to heavy pressure and I'm dragging it and I'm gonna come back up, still dragging it to light pressure, like so. And I'm just practicing this light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And then once you've practiced that, you can head over and practice curving it a little. And this is gonna help with leaves and flowers. So when you're doing the light pressure to heavy pressure, you're gonna move your brush in kind of like a C curve. So you're gonna go light pressure, heavy pressure, we're moving it kind of like in a C, kind of bringing it down, light pressure. See that kind of curve? Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Try the other way. Start at the top, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. Okay. Then try and make them shorter or longer just by increasing or decreasing the amount of time spent on the heavy pressure. So you can go light pressure, heavy pressure, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You can even just curve it and then move to light pressure. You get really, really long leaves. Again, maybe don't go all the way down to heavy pressure. Make it a medium sized line. Light pressure, heavier pressure, not all the way down. Curve it, curve it, curve it and release. Or you can make it really short by just doing little down up motions. See what kind of shapes you can create with that. Put some of those shapes together and you can create a leaf. Okay, a little curve, curve it up, light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure, 
and just practice. You can even just practice dabbing your brush and seeing what that does. I use this when I'm creating some like lavender sprigs or raindrops shapes. You can just use the shape of your brush and just dab it. Okay, just see what you can do. Make marks on your page and get to know your brush and your paints. And that's about it. Just create a bunch of lines with your brushes and your paint and you will be comfortable holding that brush in no time. So those are my exercises for getting to know your supplies today. I really hope that was helpful. Have fun and just experiment and let go of the idea of perfection. Today, your job is to just play. Let's try and take this a step further and do another exercise. Do the same kind of thing, but you're swatching all of your colors, getting familiar with the colors in your palette and your brush and different strokes. Create a watercolor background, just swatching those colors and having fun and practicing. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait for the whole paper to fully dry and you're just gonna cut small strips. I'm using my paper cutter. You don't need anything fancy like a paper cutter. You can just use scissors and I'm cutting them into strips, into little rectangles and creating cute little gift tags by adding some ribbon or bookmarks or even using a larger piece to create the background of a card. Be creative, have fun and put those practice pages to work. Thank you guys so much for watching my first video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you feel a little bit more confident in your supplies. Make sure you join me tomorrow for our next video and exercises to practice. I'm so excited you decided to join me on this watercolor journey. We are gonna have a ton of fun this week. Now get some rest and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.